Mr. Mayor, we have two members absent this evening, Councillor Schreider and Councillor Dave Mayette. We reach 6.30, so you may begin. Thank you, Linda. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this committee of the whole meeting of the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores and welcome all members of the committee and everyone who's watching us on the live stream this evening. We're glad you're all here. The second item on the agenda is disclosure of pecuniary interest. Ask any member if you have one of those you'd like to declare at this time. Seeing none, of course, you can do that anytime if you need to. We have no additions, deletions, or amendments. There is no open forum this evening, so we have delegations, and we have three delegations. I'll just, before we get into them, remind all the delegations that we have 10 minutes uh, set aside for each delegation. So um, we hope that you'll be able to stick to that time frame for us. It would be much appreciated. So the first uh, delegation this evening is from Brooke McLean, the director of the Bruce County Public Library, and she's here with an update. And there she is. Hey, Brooke. Hello. Um, good evening, council members. It's my pleasure to be here tonight and to share a brief update of what's happening at the Bruce County Public Library. And if we can move to the next slide of my presentation. Yeah, we'll just get I'll tell you a little bit. Of, okay. We're not seeing it. Oh, there it is. Mm. Got it. Not appearing yet. Tracy was going to run the PowerPoint for me. I think they're working on it. Give us half a sec here. Okay, we'll sure. We can get it uh, brought up for you here. Thank you. Perfect. So if we can go to the next slide about Bruce County Public Library. Bruce County Public Library has 17 branches throughout the county, as well as one virtual branch. And in uh, Sogging Shores, we operate branches at both the Southampton and Port Elgin locations. Bruce County Public Library is an accredited public library under the Ontario Public Library guidelines, which means that we meet or exceed a set of objective, widely accepted guidelines. We recently updated our strategic plan and modified our mission and our vision. Our mission is to provide all the information, knowledge, and entertainment resources you need to achieve your goals, foster your interests, and realize your dreams. Our vision is that as a trusted community contributor, we're building a future of innovative ways for you to read, connect, learn, and discover. Next slide, please. So our mission has really been highlighted since the pandemic began. And in 2019, the last year before COVID interrupted everything, BCPL impacted the lives of 23,000 people through 2,600 library programs. Prior to COVID, Bruce County Public Library did not offer any online programming. But last year, we presented 292 online programs with nearly 9,000 attendees. And I would encourage you, if you haven't had a chance, to see some of the outstanding programming that our innovative staff are doing, have a look at our YouTube channel to check that out. And next slide, please. Well, Bruce County Public Library always strives to support our communities. This has really been at the fore throughout the pandemic. Some of the library initiatives were to have staff help residents at long-term care homes to connect to their families by arranging and facilitating Skype meetings using our library iPads. We initiated a chat service and a virtual reference desk to assist those having difficulty with technology. We built partnerships with community crafters and Canada Sews Grey Bruce to provide free handmade face coverings at all 17 branches. Uh, and that program is still ongoing. And in 2020, we sent home over 3000 activity kits for teens, children and adults to provide a unique monthly DIY um, activity for them to do. Next slide, please. So funding from the NWMO and the Society of Engineering Professionals has allowed us to purchase 3D printers. Uh, we use these to pr print ear savers for our paramedics and distributed them to their patrons and our branches as well. We've also printed nose pieces for um, anybody that wears glasses with their masks. They've been really handy to stop them from fogging up. Those have also been distributed through our library branches. We also spent some time exploring the possibility of printing filter components uh, with the Owen Sound Hospital. 
And so we've had a 3D printer at the Port Elgin branch uh, since September. They were one of our first branches to get the 3D printer uh, and it will be over at the Southampton location next summer. And while they're in the branches, residents have a chance to see how the printers work as well. They can take a certification course and create their own 3D prints. Next slide, please. Our online database usage has soared during the pandemic. And while ebook and e-audiobook use has steadily climbed over the last five years, in 2020, it increased 25%. Our online database usage has increased 205%. And I wanted to share two of our most popular databases with you tonight. Uh, the first one is called Canopy. This allows card holders to stream movies, documentaries, and great courses. Um, great courses, if you haven't heard of them, they are a series of college level courses led by award-winning experts and instructors and include everything from nuclear physics to your everyday guide to beer. Next slide, please. Press Reader offers unlimited access to over 7,000 newspapers and magazines in 75 languages. And they, they are translatable as well. You can read the Wall Street Journal or the Owen Sound Sun Times um, and browse hundreds of magazines from around the world. And of course, these databases, along with all our other services, are free with a Bruce County Public Library card. Next slide, please. So in addition to bolstering our online collections, the library continues to add to our physical collections. And in 2021, we've added binoculars, wonder books, and playaways. Uh, wonder books are print titles with an audiobook component built in for children. And our playaways are an all-in-one audiobook, which means there are no longer any CDs to change. We've also partnered with the Alzheimer's Society of Grey Bruce to provide memory care kits for people living with dementia and their loved ones. Next slide, please. So Bruce County Public Library does have a large collection of non-traditional lending items. Um, and a few of those include snowshoes, uh, sad lamps, technology kits, ukuleles, ozobots, puzzles, museum and park passes, fishing equipment, as well as sensory kits. Next slide, please. So our Port Elgin and Southampton branches offer a number of engaging library programs for all ages. Kids and adults are learning about 3D printing, as I mentioned, in one-on-one -on -one and small group sessions. And actually, <laughs> Marianne, one of our um, Assistant Branch Supervisor said she hasn't had a chance to get on to the 3D printer to try some of her own prints because it's constantly been booked for use by uh, individuals wanting to learn more about the printer. So that's really a great, great news story. Um, we have grab and go bags, a convenient way for readers to get a collection of recommended reads. And adult activities such as our wreath making program are supported by the Port Elgin Friends of the Library, which we very much appreciate. Um, popular Spanish classes have also resumed at the Southampton branch. All of our branches have been busy printing and laminating vaccine receipts for residents. To date, we've printed over 19,000 vaccine receipts and the Port Elgin and Southampton branches have printed 30% of those. Next slide, please. Sorry. Today, we launched a preview of our new online catalog powered by Biblio Commons. Um, the new catalog makes it easier for library members to engage with our resources and find what they're looking for. Next slide, please. And one of our big projects is implementing a bookmobile service for Bruce County residents. A Wi-Fi equipped bookmobile will bring internet, library services, social connection and technology throughout the county and allow us to go where the people are to long-term care residences, daycares, community events, and newcomer gatherings. And we are currently fundraising to purchase the bookmobile and hope to launch it in 2022. Next slide, please. And so finally, as a trusted community partner, we look forward to continuing to explore ways to engage and support our communities. Our recently completed strategic plan positions our libraries to be community connectors, digital facilitators and community sharing places. We're excited to con continue impacting Bruce County and the community of Sogging Shores in 2022. Next slide, please. 
and I included contact information for myself as well as Lori Lettingham, who is the lead branch supervisor at the Port Elgin and Southampton branches. And certainly happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Brooke. And we'll ask if there's questions or comments from members of the committee. We'll get Councillor Grace and then the Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, thank you very much, Brooke, for the, the um, presentation. It's so impressive, all of the innovative programming and services that you offer. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Lori Lettingham, uh, our uh, Sogging Shore Supervisor, and just mention how um, grateful our um, environmental committee, I'm the chair of the uh, town's environmental committee. Lori was extremely helpful in um, distributing our surveys that ran from August 16th to September 17th. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Just one, one other service, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, the deputy mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, Brooke, uh, thank you and all your staff for what you've done during the, the COVID times. I know a lot of people, as you said, 25% uptake in the online um, book, um, and that, that's only going to continue to grow. People have a taste for it, and they're looking for, for more and more ways to be able to get stuff. Um, are we limited to the number of, of books and or programs that people are able to purchase or, or get through their library? Um, so just so I understand the question in terms of limited to what we can obtain through the library, do you mean what's like actually on the shelf in Port Elgin or Southampton or? Well, electronic, that? I mean, like you, oh. do we have a limit on the number of downloads? Okay. Um, do you put out a survey right. to people to ask, you know, what is it you're looking for? Is it TED Talks? The, do the people want, okay. you know, the online listening? So that's really interesting. So the, the thing with ebooks and e-audio books is they're significantly costlier than a physical book. Yeah. Um, so our collection of them is necessarily smaller. However, because we are part of the Ontario Library Service Consortium, we do have access to books um, that are also purchased through the consortium. So if you log in with your library card to borrow an e-book or an e-audio book, you'll see materials that are purchased specifically for Bruce County residents, but then also materials that are available to the wider Ontario community. Um, so uh, generally we have really good access to them. Sometimes things are not um, made into an audiobook, for example, so then we, we struggle to fill a need. Um, but overall we've, we've managed very well based on what we're circulating in the branches as well as what we're able to obtain uh, electronically. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, the Vice Deputy Mayor, and then we'll get Councillor Davinsky. Yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Brooke, for your, uh, for your presentation. A uh, couple of uh, questions. I just wondering whether you had them at your fingertips or not, but the membership numbers, uh, more of the branch library, perhaps, manager would have those numbers. I just want you to have them, but the uh, numbers at Southampton, Port Algon, in terms of memberships uh, pre COVID and what happened during during COVID? That's the first question I have, and then I have a follow-up question. Okay, so I can speak to the active members that we had in June of 2021. We had just under 2,000 at the Port Elgin branch and about 1,300 at the Southampton branch. Um, so we look at those numbers biannually. Uh, so the last time we ran those was in June. Um, we have not seen a significant um, increase or decrease in those numbers for the Saugeen Shores branches. Fairly constant. Are those fairly good numbers, yeah. uh, Brooke, compared to other libraries? Like, could we? We're comparable to other libraries, certainly. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think overall, um, branches, libraries have seen some decrease in active right. library users over the last five years, okay. um, but we're still sitting around 25 to 35 percent um, okay. of active library card members you. compared to population. Brooke, our op operating subsidy we received, Sogging Shores, to run our libraries from, from Bruce County is, I think our operating deficit in Port Algon, I think is around 20 or 25,000. Um, mm -hmm. When was the last review um, in terms of, from Bruce County's standpoint, your standpoint as a director, when was the last review uh, undertaken in terms of 
taking a look at whether the, the subsidy passed on to municipalities is actually covering our cost to operate the libraries. This year was a little bit more of a difficult year with cost of living four, four and a half percent. I think our increase was two, two and a half percent from the county. What was the last review done in terms of the amount of subsidies passed on to municipalities? So we um, signed lease agreements with all the municipalities in 2017 for library services and set the rate per square foot with an annual increase of 2%. So another review in 2022, in other words? The annual increase happens every year. The lease agreements are signed through till they were a 15 year lease. 15 they expire years. in 2033. Oh, okay, 15 year lease. Thanks for that. Brooke, You're welcome. Councilor Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you to Brooke. Uh, Brooke, your presentation showed, um, boy, all kinds of people using the library services. I'm wondering, do you have a handle on the primary demographic of uh, the services being used by the uh, various people? Um. That would be a very hard for me to, to pin down, I'm afraid. We know that different services appeal to different demographics. Um, so in terms of saying that we serve more adults than children, it really depends on the program that we're running. Um, we serve more children at various times of the year. So for example, through the summer, we see increased rates of, of use among kids. Um, whereas at different times of the year, we see increases among um, adults. We do not track um, by age in terms of um, lending uh, materials, um, just because of, of privacy. That's not something that we do um, generally in public libraries, but uh, we are certainly familiar with the demographics in each of our communities, as well as Bruce County overall. Well, it looks like a fantastic uh, job that you and the staff are doing. And I thank you very much for that answer. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from members? I don't see any. Well, thank you, Brooke. Uh, the uh, Bruce County Libraries are uh, really, uh, I mean, some of our libraries uh, in Sogging Shores have been around for, um, you know, over a hundred years, the Port Elgin Library uh, and, uh, um, you know, so they're long-standing institutions and they're really important institutions, particularly, you know, when you think about it, um, there are very few places where you can uh, walk into uh, without a purpose, uh, just to go in and, and be and, and sit and, and hang out if you want to, or read a book or whatever. Most places like, you know, you think about our arenas or our, um, or, our businesses or whatever, you have to go in and have a purpose, right? You have to have an appointment, you have to have a a reason to be there, but not in your libraries. Your libraries are there for, for the people to use and to do that uh, freely. And, and um, um, those are precious institutions. So that's an important thing to have in our community, in our downtowns. And we have, we're fortunate to have one in both downtown Southampton and downtown Port Elgin. And we're fortunate that uh, we have great staff like you and everybody working for Bruce County Libraries uh, running those facilities. And what you've, what's been accomplished during the pandemic has been, uh, has been really outstanding. You talk about 19, would you say 19,000 of the of the vaccine certificates Vaccines. being printed and laminated mm -hmm. by our libraries? That's just one example of uh, how the libraries have been there for the people of the region. Uh, and a third of those, we're talking like better than 6,000 of them done right here in our community. So yeah. uh, that's pretty uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, for all that, just thank you on behalf of the community, Brooke. And, uh, and I know the town of Saugeen George looks forward to continue our partnership with the Bruce County Public Library. So thank you. Thanks very much. All right, so we'll go on then to our next delegation, which is from John Miller, the president, and Joanne Robbins uh, of the Pumpkin Fest Committee. Uh, and they're here to give us a 2021 update on events. I see, are they, I don't see them yet. Are they with us? Oh, here's Joanne. You guys there, Joanne and John? We are. Of course, my computer yeah. skills are as slow as ever, but uh, <laughs> All right. I hope you don't hold that against us here. Um, again, your worship and council, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight. Um, it's always important for us to uh, update everyone, to uh, let, let everyone know what we're up to. 
And again, Joanne is with me. So if we don't get something right or I don't get something right, Joanne will be here to correct me. And the other thing is, of course, as always, is um, these things are quick. They're short. That's what they're meant to be. So we always encourage not only the public, but also, um, you know, town staff, council to reach out to us anytime. It's one of our specialties. Uh, you know, we prefer before midnight, but again, after midnight, one of the two of us is usually available to doing something. So we can always be reached. That's the last Linda from slides. Yeah, Linda is going to look after our slides, I believe. Or Tracy. Or Tracy. That's great. So that should be up there. So again, with time being of the essence here, we'll just jump to the next one there. Um, again, one of the most important things at Pumpkin Fest, um, you know, as part of our team, and this is a, always a good opportunity to remind everybody, is we are, of course, run as a nonprofit corporation, and our official description or title is just this. Port Elgin Pumpkin Fest is a community organization for the purpose of developing and fostering community spirit by hosting, supporting, and implementing local festivals and events. Um, again, this is our specialty. This is what we do. Um, we have a great team that works on this. Of course, everybody knows our event. But again, to get there and to get to that point, we work on a number of other activities. Um, again, tourism, beach market, the resource center, and of course, Pumpkin Fest itself. So that's one of the sort of main events tonight. Uh, I'll skip to the next slide here. Um, again, Pumpkin Fest, Soggy Shores Tourism. This was a unique opportunity that came up this year, um, working with Shannon of the uh, supervisor there for tourism. Um, we had an opportunity this year through a contract. Um, I believe it's actually been reported back in October, but uh, to work directly with tourism in Saugeen Shores, um, help put in place some priority items. Uh, we were successful in uh, you know having two of our tourism or tourism students that we were able to get grants for this summer pumpkin fest, but they were able to put some time in there. Um, again, updated the tourism website and a couple of strong business activities, you know, accommodation activities, things that this town needs. Important to, uh, as we come out of COVID, as always, know what we have available and make sure we're getting our best bang for the buck out of that. So that was a specialty thing this year. It was a one-year contract, um, but again, it worked well in both cases. And I think Shannon was pretty happy with us. And I know we were happy with everything, you know, that we were able to accomplish working with her. Um, again, next slide. The uh, beach market, of course, everybody knows the Port Elgin Beach Market. It used to be the uh, Port Elgin Tourist Association Beach Market, and uh, now it's just become more the Port Elgin Beach Market. Uh, nine, 1990, or 2019 was our first year, very successful. Took over what was already a strong event and just improved on it. Then of course we got whammy like everybody else with COVID. Um, through a lot of hard work in 2021, we did open it up. Um, again, we wanna, Thank our friends both at CCV and of course the town for working with us because again, um, everything from limited vendors, as you can see, to the uh, you know PPE costs, the amount of activities, the setup, the tear down as that site was isn't exactly in what I would call a market ready condition right now. Uh, something I know we're working on all the time. But again, we did have a very successful event. Um, again, we lost one week because of weather, but. I think that's kind of a normal in Port Elgin. We always get that one Wednesday that's just not safe to be there. Um, again, I think you can tell by the averages, the amount of vendors that we had. And I am pleased to announce that basically we broke even this year. Didn't cost us anything to run. And uh, the uh, strong points being, of course, is that we did provide a service. We gave people something to do. We had some great activities. Uh, we got some great feedback from local people. Love to see you there, love to see you down there. Um, and then again, through donations at the door, you know, we have the big um, admission of 25 cents a person, but some people were very generous this year. So we were, you know, we're able to put, you know, another four or $5,000 in donations that of course go right back into the resource center. Again, very important part of what we're doing and has never been more important when it comes to running events under this uh, current climate here of the PPE alone and the, uh, you know, the hand sanitizers that have those available not just on a wall or like everybody has at their front door, but actually have them to be moved around, um, shared with some of our partners. Um, and again, attendance was good. We got what we wanted out of it. Of course, loved working with both the BIA and the Heritage in Southampton. Their Friday market took off like a, an amazing event. Um, so again, we're gonna get together and talk about that for next year, but it was quite successful by all means. Um, next slide here. Uh, the resource center. Again, I always call our lovely resource center the most 
if most communities have no idea that we have such an event here, such a facility, uh, we have our little barn, um, again, you know, we still were able to help even under these circumstances, 25 local events. These are things simple as tables, chairs, garbage cans, signposts, stuff all stored in one location and shared. Um, again, I know not all councillors have had a thing, um, especially new councillor, Mrs. Bravinsky. I don't know if we ever had you offer to get into that shed, um, but we always invite everybody to come down in the spring, see what we've got. Um, there's this big, there's this big peerless in the way now. So I don't think we'll get into see too much now until spring, but uh, we always look forward to that. Um, again, you know, we, did, we, we lost a number of events this year, but I think it's resource center has never been more important because again, we want these events to come back and continue in the future. And again, I know even the tankard, uh, the big, that big event that, that coming up this uh, winter season, you know, we've always, already been in contact with them and using some of our supplies and things like that. It, it's a strong part of our community and something that, uh, well, like I say, a lot of other communities would be very jealous of us if they realized what we had. So um, again, next slide. Um, again, let's talk about Pumpkin Fest this year. This is the blockbuster. This is our king. This is what we, we do it for. Um, again, I hope that everybody had a chance to get there. Everybody had a chance to at least attend for a little bit. I know uh, your mayor, we kept you very busy on the forklift that day because again, uh, volunteerism is down. We had a hard time drawing out the people like we had. So I know uh, there's a lot of the volunteers that we had worked very hard this year. It's been a few extra hours, be it on a forklift or, you know, picking up garbage cans. Um, this is something we're going to work on in the future. But again, um, well, the, the tourism economic impact model, which is one of the reports that was put out there, we did go through that process. We looked at how we did, you know, the number of cars taking down the percent of overnight stays to only 15%. And under those numbers and that statistics, we're quite proud of ourselves. And we say it was a $1.5 million event. So I think that's a strong impact under COVID times. And at a time when, uh, you know, we really weren't sure how it was going to go three, you know, literally a month before we weren't sure we were going to be able to have that car show on the main street. And I still have people, um, you know, that I run into that say, oh, we heard that was such a great thing. I wish we had been there. And isn't that what it's all about? You know, making sure that the people look, something to look forward to. And again, um, also through contracts, you know, some of our fundraising groups, events that couldn't do their own events this year were able to help us out at the doors or help us with the fencing and things like that. So it was a good way to spread the, spread the wealth around and give people that you know, maybe hadn't had a chance to be involved with us other years. You know, Some years we have 40 plus different groups. We didn't have room for that many this year, but we were able to ones. And again, they all worked very hard. Um, when the paperwork is done and everything breaks out, I think we everything you know, we paid for this year event. It didn't cost us anything. As, as it, when we sit around the table and as the president, especially knowing that there's no checkbooks have to come out to cover the debt as has been done in our 35 year history before, um, you know, it was a good year that way. We do look forward to the future and uh, seeing, you know, what comes next. Um, again, speaking of what comes next, that brings us to uh, where we are now. Um, the tourism contract, of course, was just a one year contract. So the town is, um, you know, taking on that role and they've moved into some of the plans and they're working on that office. So that funding may not be available to us this year. Uh, again, the market, the same thing. There's always a lot of questions as we move forward. Um, we will definitely be working with the two other markets, um, you know, both the BIA market up in Southampton or uh, the Southampton on the Friday. Or no, that's Marine Heritage. Yes. Marine Heritage, my apologies, Marine Heritage and the Port Elgin BIA up on the uh, Wednesday market on the main street. You know, we'll definitely be meeting with them early next year to keep this going. Uh, the Resource Center, um, again, team will continue to be involved there. We're working very closely with Marine Heritage. Uh, you know, we were able to get the Peerless in there, so it's uh, proper storage for the winter this year, help out on that. And again, uh, those guys are great on some of the maintenance issues. I'm not very good with a hammer, they tell me, so uh, some of those guys in the Marine Heritage can really help out a building, fix up a window. So that's been a strong part of it. Uh, Pumpkin Fest itself, we... Um, well, I think the problem we looked around our meeting and most of our board that was there was 35 years older than when we started. So again, <laughs> I, I know that makes Joanne 45, but the rest of us, it makes a little older. Um, so again, we are gonna be having to do some restudying in January. We're gonna look and see what's coming this year, how we're gonna do it. Um, our weekend warriors, as they call them, it's amazing what one year off, and then you go to the next year and you realize how many volunteers you need 
to properly look after and handle that. Again, this is our signature event. We make no bones about it. This is what, you know, I truly believe that the only reason Ontario Tourism uses pumpkin fests on most of their brochures and pumpkins now is because of what our festival and what we've been able to accomplish here in Port Elgin. So again, we're looking forward to the next 35 years. But with that being said, we do understand we've got some strong opportunities to, uh, you know, make some changes and maybe this is the time to go about how we do it for the future. Um, so again, uh, again, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the town staff, the uh, from the guys that helped us out with the barricades that weekend to the, um, you know, the town guys that were picking up the garbage. Um, I mean, it's always a big deal that they really put their hands off this year. I know they're always willing to help, but this year seemed extra special. Um, again, we encourage everybody, if you haven't taken, take a brief through. There's some great entertainment. See the way off. See the car show entries on pumpkinfest.org. It's there. And again, like I say, we're looking forward to next year, but like we are very realistic in that we've got some planning and issues to work on. So again, any questions or we won't take up too much more time, but if there are some questions, we'd love to answer. Thank you, John and Joanne. Questions or comments from members of the committee, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Mine just really a comment, Mr. Mayor John and Joanne. Uh, thanks so much for for all you do and to the entire board and all those wonderful volunteers that helped make uh, you know, Pumpkin Fest Aubrey the last 35 years and it would be great to see another 35 years. And my wife and I were two of those people that took a walk down the memory lane of the 10,000 people. And it's really an incredible number when you think about during COVID. And uh, I just, uh, it was so well organized and, and the gates and, uh, you know, the fact you broke even, that, that's, that's good news too. And uh, you, you, you know, you two in particular, and you two in particular and the entire board just keep on giving and uh, what a great event for uh, the community and area. So I just want to say thank you, uh, John. Thank you, Joanne, and all your board members and volunteers for just another job. Really, really well done. I really appreciate all you do. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll get Councillor Smith and then Councillor Grace. Thank you. And through you, uh, my sincere appreciation as well for all that you and your board have done. But uh, I was particularly intrigued by your mention of the Port Elgin BIA market and ways in which we can work together. Uh, I sit on that board and I'm very much looking forward to ways we can collaborate and make that a, a mutually successful event for the beach market in future years. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Grace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, through you, thank you, John and Joanne um, and your whole team for everything you do. Um, I wanted to uh, particularly um, recognize the Event Resource Center uh, because I do think that is innovative, an innovative model really uh, for other communities to look at. And um, it, it's very inspiring to see that kind of partnership and uh, collaborative support among all of those groups and making those resources available to, um, you know, not to be competing, but really to support each other. So thank you for that aspect of all your work too. Very good. Further questions or comments, Councilor Davinsky. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much, uh, John and Joanne. And uh, having covered Pumpkin Fest, if you will, from a news media point of view, uh, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, it is run so smoothly. And uh, every once in a while, there might be a blip, and yet that blip is solved right then and there. So I just wanted to thank you for a well-oiled, uh, well-run machine, and I'm taking you up on that offer this spring, that invite. Very good. Further questions or comments? Oh, John, you're, are you talking there, John? We, you're on mute if you are. No, we were just saying we will so, we will so. Oh, very good. Okay, uh, if there's no further questions or comments, I'll just, you know, it's everyone has thanked you already, and uh, certainly I echo that, I think. And as Councillor Grace pointed out, you know, with this resource center um, concept and the concept of supporting, you know, all of these events, you know, your the, the the beach market, the BIA market, the marine heritage market, pumpkin fest, and any other any and all the other lists that you've got here, you know, one of the biggest issues with getting people to um, create new events and volunteer for events is, you know, if you want to run a fish fry, what you want to do is go fry some fish. You don't want to spend a bunch of time looking for garbage cans and where do I get the picnic tables and how do I get the snow fence or whatever it is I need to get. So to have 
those resources available right at people's fingertips so that they can get to doing what they want to be doing. Uh, uh, that um, helps those events to happen and helps us to keep our volunteers from burning out. As and you know, and I, so I think that's really critical. And another great resource we get with the resource center is you guys, right? And the resources that you bring, your expertise in organizing events, which is uh, um, really second to none. I mean, the stuff that you guys have done in terms of making events happen, uh, you're probably our top experts in the community on that front. So, uh, so it's a huge resource for us as a community to have you doing these things. And so I was so pleased when Pumpkin Fest decided to spread out and, and broaden its wings and start to do more of the more events than just Pumpkin Fest, because I think uh, you can do so much good that way. So, um, so I'm looking forward to the partnership continuing between the town and Pumpkin Fest. And I hope at time read in here, you mentioned that um, you're going to have um, a bit of a, well, a couple of meetings maybe about the beach market and about Pumpkin Fest early in the new year. And so I certainly hope that I know that you'll invite uh, representatives from the town to be there involved in that. We're really keen to partner with you and make sure those events can happen because they're critical events for the community. So, uh, so make sure we're invited, make sure we're at the table. We want to be there and, and look forward to keep working with you. So thanks for your time this evening. Thank you, Mayor. All right. So that moves on to our final presentation for the evening from Connie Barker. And she's here to chat, to talk to us about the Chantry Center update. And there's Connie's name. Audio. Hello, Connie. There Am I are. in? Yep, you're there. Good to see you. Oh, sure. I'm here. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? We're great, Connie. You just How had you? two of the most incredible deputations that I have heard in a long time. Both of them are fabulous. <laughs> uh, and we <laughs> saved the best for last, oh, Connie. We <laughs> saved the best for last. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, Deputy Mayor, John, Vice Deputy Mayor Mike, and Councillors. I'm here to talk to you about the Chantry Centre. We've got our partners lined up. Um, we have uh, created with United Way, Innovation Catalyst, Nuclear Power X, Bruce Power, West Stereo Power, Port Elgin's Lions Club have enabled us to reopen with programs designed by Recreational Respite Inc. The Chantry Center has partnered with Park and the Southampton Legion. We're doing our, we're kind of coordinating our marketing together. So if I've got an event happening, I send it to the Legion or, and I send it on to Park and then that's fed out so that we're, we're getting a broader reach with the events that are happening in the community. The reopening has been phenomenal. It has been so fabulous, a lot of work, but We've introduced so many new programs and they've been really incredibly met. They've been um, brought to us with uh, virtually, which has been a whole new concept. I myself will um, say that this is, I find difficult to get my head around, but I'm learning really quickly here. Um, we had a wellness program, we had creative writing, Bon Appetit, where I invited everybody into the kitchen. Um, we had eight people participate. We learned how to create vegan meals and we created um, not our gluten-free meals. And then we served them all up and everybody got to take home meals for the future. So it was, it was phenomenal. Um, we did a, a crocheting and we've done a playing with art where we brought in Albert Kaysun, who is a local artist. And what we did was we played. We learned how to sketch. And the next time we played with um, black, like doing ink. So ink art and then watercolors and then pastels. And he's gonna be coming in back in in January. And we're hoping to look at charcoal and that type of thing. And what I'm hoping to do is then create groups of that want to do watercolors and that sort of thing. So where they start to meet and they start to, they keep playing and, and growing their art. Um, I have winter programs set up, which are armchair travel, um, growing herbs, 
getting out of uh, getting your gardens ready. And this is where I've already uh, mentioned to the mayor that I'd really like to draw him in as a guest speaker, because I know that people would be really interested in how the farm gets going in the spring and uh, fiber arts. So recreational respite with Amy and her team have enabled us to learn new things, teaching us how to virtually open the world up and to learn and stay in contact with each other. We still have past members who are staying home. Actually, they, some came out and some are going back home again. Um, but we're trying to keep everybody safe. I'm in constant contact with Grey Bruce Regional Health Services to make sure that we're doing it right. Um, it's been a hard two years. We've uh, been able to pay our bills. We've been able to keep the doors open. Um, but we're just starting to get forward. So that's why I sent forward the ask for the funds for senior programming. As a volunteer, it's really difficult to try to do a lot of these things, but bringing in a company like Amy's was so instrumental in showing us and opening up those other avenues. Um, so that was the part where uh, really made it a lot easier for to, to get the opening up going. The introduction, the introduction of the new programs has helped bring in new members into the center and we continue to introduce new workshops with learning opportunities. We have done well, but we definitely do have a long way to go. Um, we were uh, successful in getting a grant from the, and I want to say it correctly, uh, community, or, uh, community fo uh, Foundation um, of Grey Bruce, and they've given us some extra money. So I've got a bigger TV on order, and it's going to have a, a camera on the top of it so you can see the whole room when you're doing this stuff. <laughs> and I have tech guys that are going to come and teach me how to turn it all on. <laughs> um, it's, it's exciting. It's it's, it's really exciting. It's been opened up and we're all coming together. The help has been fabulous. I can't say enough good things about the town staff. Um, whenever I hit a, a, a slidey part or a scary part that I'm not sure of, all I have to do is call Tracy or Colleen or any of them and they're absolutely there for me. So they've been absolutely fabulous. Um, Frank's been wonderful. I, I just can't say enough good things about the staff um, and their help. And I'd just like to finish by saying I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and may the new year bring you as much good luck as it's going to bring me. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to that. All right. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> Are there questions or comments uh, from members of the committee, the Vice Deputy Mayor? And then Councilor Grace. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Connie, uh, just a week ago, led by our mayor, um, I, I believe it's okay to say this, Mr. Mayor, tonight, that, that I think it was a small request for I think a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Connie and uh, Mayor Luke uh, put that on the floor, and I think it was unanimously supported. I believe, and uh, his preliminary approval of full, you know the final budget's approved in February, of course. But thank you, Mr. Mayor, for bringing that forth, and Connie, and uh, it was a, a good, good support from around the table. So that's a little piece of good good news for you, thank Connie. You. And um, yes. I just I, I want to thank you that you I think you're, you're president I guess president of the I am Center, at the Connie, moment yes and, <laughs> and you do a wonderful and you do a wonderful job and and it's a it's a great service in our community to have the, the Chantry Senior Center years ago I, I went over spoke to them a few times uh, back in my day but um, it's it's really a very viable organization and it, it sounds like you're you know breathing a new, new fresh air you know into the into the center and that's that's great news so I just want to thank you for all you do and I, I did have one question. Connie, yes. um, your um, the use of the building. Um, is there much goes on there during evenings and weekends, or do you shut the close the doors? Be, you know, you operate nine to five, but is there much happening there evenings and weekends? And is that Actually, space open? Is that space open to the public? It is um, for rent to the public. Right, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah. And yes, um, what we have found though is we've extended. We've got a group that now meets every Sunday afternoon knitting. So a knitting group. So for somebody that's sitting home all alone and they now come to the center and they have a group that sit around and they knit together and 
We're trying to open up more programs on the weekends so that it's, there's more availability for things like that. But yes, it is for rent. We have rented out for a couple of Christmas parties and that sort of thing. Again, I'm following the rules and there's masks and there's all that kind of stuff. But uh, yes. So the, it's nice to know that the, the building is available, though, you know, through Absolutely. Monday to Friday on weekends for members of the public to, mm -hmm. you know, to rent for small groups because there's a need for that kind of thing in our in our mm -hmm. communities. So and it creates a little, you know, better rent for revenue for your organization, too. So thanks again, Connie, for the great job you do. Appreciate thank it. You, thank you. Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, uh, Connie, thanks again for everything that you and your group do. Um, I just wanted to mention something that um, it was an event I was at, I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago at the Chantry Centre to launch the Seniors Ask program. Mm -hmm. um, and then in our Accessibility Committee meeting um, last week, I guess, um, yes. Uh, Dave Wen, who's in charge of that, and I think you're very involved in it as well, yeah. um, made a presentation to the committee, but this is a great program too, and the Chantry Center is being really supportive of it, and uh, it, it's, uh, from my understanding, I'm sure you can explain it more fully, but it's a free service uh, where seniors who have questions about resources, assistance, uh, any kind of help they might need or information they might need, they can call uh, and you will have people at the Chantry Center, volunteers, um, helping direct them to where they need to go. And you have some dedicated hours, I think, at the center to help that program. So that's another fantastic program uh, that you're helping to facilitate. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, there is someone there um, Tuesdays and Thursday afternoon that answers the phone, but messages can be, and then they get back. And it is letting you know what is available in Grey Bruce. If you're new to the community and you don't know what's happening, then you give the call and they will help you out. Okay, I saw the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you, Connie. Uh, can't say enough, thank you for all you do for the community. It's been a long time. Uh, and we know how valuable the community, uh, the Chantry Community Center is for the community. Uh, what it provides for the seniors and everybody in town is we we wouldn't be able to do without. So for from everybody on council, thank you for what you do. If there's anything you need, you know, you just come knock and, and let us know and we'll try to do our best to make sure that you have what you need. Thank you. It was nice to be there. Sorry, I meant to ask this question. Connie, I'm just wondering, um, over the course of the year, I, I do receive, you know, the odd request for, for seniors in our community that require, you know, require income tax services. And I'm just wondering if that's something that, um, you know, for basic, and I'm talking about basic, uh, very basic income tax returns. Is that something Chantry Senior Center has ever considered where you, uh, you know, provide a couple, you know, trying to recruit a couple of volunteers, former retired accountants or whatever, where you can help with, with income tax returns. I do receive that request from time to time. It just, so, you know, it's, I never, just want to, just want to plant the seed with you, you know, just a thought. Oh, that's great. We've never looked at it. Um, and I'm sure that if we put a, call, a shout out, we might get something organized that we okay. could help out. If there's a real, I think, I think there's yeah, a real need there. Anyways, yeah. okay. Actually, just, um, this is a piece of information I picked up during the Seniors Ask presentation at the Accessibility Committee last week. Um, that uh, MP Lobb's office will provide that kind of assistance. Oh, perfect. Oh, we're solving all sorts of problems here. Are there further uh, questions or comments uh, for Connie? You don't see any, well, thanks very much, Connie, and thanks for all of your work. I mean, uh, you just do a huge amount of work there. I would, and I also should add, I want to say particularly thank you for um, the fact that you were there for us and have uh, provided support during the pandemic. Uh, in terms of uh, making sure the facility was available uh, when the community uh, might need it uh, for certain uh, when uh, well when we needed it and uh, you guys you guys were there and I, I really uh, uh, want to thank you for that and uh, and I was really pleased to see the partnership come together with Amy and Recreational Respite I think that's such a, a cool oh. partnership and so many great things are going to come of that uh, that's such a great organization and and um, so I like seeing that come to fruition is really great so anyway I mean um, it's been said, you guys are doing a great job and the town is keen to uh, 
be there with you and, and work with you. This is a really, we're so lucky to have the senior center uh, and, and for it to be so active and we recognize that and are keen to make sure that it continues to be active. So any help we can provide or our staff can provide, I know you know to come ask and so don't be a stranger, make sure to do that. Thank you. Thanks, we'll talk to you soon. You betcha. Bye everyone. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. That moves on to, uh, we have no public meeting. We're under reports of municipal officers and committees and 7.3 infrastructure and development. Two reports under infrastructure and development this evening. The first one is a staff report on Bruce Road 25 sewer and water services and the director of infrastructure and development. Thank you and three, Mr. Mayor. Bruce Road 25 construction is complete for phases two and three, and the town is now working to recover the costs of providing the water and sanitary connections to these properties. Development charges paid for the majority of the sewer and water main work to extend services to the south end of Port Elgin, and Bruce County paid for the majority of the road work, so the cost of these services is quite low and was done at an efficient time for um, less disturbance to the road. So at this time, we look for council to approve the bylaw. Sure. So there's a recommendation that council pass a bylaw to recover costs from benefiting parties for the installation of water and sanitary services to the uh, to the property uh, on property line on Bruce Road 25. Sorry, I got a bit of feedback there. It got confusing. Anyway, uh, you've heard the recommendation. Are there uh, questions or comments? If not, then all in favor. That's carried. All right, so that moves on to the second report, which is a staff report on McNabb Street Water and Sewer Services. The director. Thank you and through you. McNabb Street is a local street that was reconstructed as part of the development of Southampton Landing. So the fees were collected mostly through that developer and the town paid for what we were going to reconstruct on that road anyway. Uh, at the time, these lots were identified as potential for development or not having sanitary sewer services. Two lots are getting new water services and some of the fees do pay for the sewer main uh, in the street on this one. All right, so the recommendation is the council pass a bylaw to recover costs from benefiting parties for the installation of water and sanitary services to the property line on McNabb Street. Is there questions or comments? I don't see any, so I'll count the, you have a question? No, all in favor, that's good. Okay, that moves us then on to uh, community services, parks and recreation. We have one staff report on the Port Elgin Beach Market Contribution and the Acting Director of Community Services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, we have a report here this evening that uh, really illustrates a little bit of what was discussed earlier in the delegation that uh, rather than collecting fees for the beach market, that those funds that may have been received would go into the event resource uh, center to uh, help with other events throughout the, the town of Saugeen Shores. So Lisa Billings had drafted this report for council's consideration. I believe she's in the background. So should should questions arise during, during discussions about the report, uh, Lisa, is available to answer any of those questions as well. Okay, thank you. The recommendation is the council waive the 2021 financial contribution for the operation of the 2021 Port Elgin Beach Market by the Port Elgin Pumpkin Fest Association. Are there questions or comments? I don't see any, so all in favor. That's carried. Thank you. All right, then we're on to 7.7, .7, communications for information, four items there. Anybody wish to discuss any of them? Don't see any, so that moves us on to nine reports of department heads, uh, five reports there. The first one is an information report on Rogers Telecommunications Tower at 582 Hefner Court. Um, that's brought to us by, I think, the Director of Infrastructure. Any comments you wanna to make to that one? Amanda, before, or no? Please. Sorry, um, not not really. This is a proposed cell tower where um, it will be visible and we are welcome to make comments back to Rogers if council so chooses, but at this time we don't see any issues with this proposed location and are happy to see uh, improved Wi-Fi or cellular infrastructure coming to our area. Okay, thank you, the Vice Deputy Mayor, and then Councilor Green. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not real. real. Oh, and oh, you're welcome to make comments. Okay, Frank, is, uh, Frank, could you mute there? So, Jesus, but 
Okay. Uh, uh, th thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm not um, real, real thrilled about having a 100 foot, 30, 30 meter tower, you know, on a gateway coming into Port Elgin, uh, not not far off the roadway. I just, I'm not sure that's the right location for a tower. Either. I mean, the Rogers Tower is important. I think it needs to be uh, it needs to go into town somewhere. But I'm just wondering if we could send this back to staff and take a look. We do have one lot, I think, or two vacant lots. Uh, I think east of the police station. In the, in the business park. I'm just wondering if there's a better location. And I wonder if we could maybe take a look, send it back to staff and and, and, and think about where else we may be able to put this. I just I just don't think it belongs along the highway coming into Port Alden, that's all. It's important to have it, but uh, I think we should be thinking about relocating, relocating. Okay, uh, Councilor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to say pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, I think having um, from, what I could see of the map, it looked like this is a lot that's right on the highway. And, uh, you know, if, if we are trying to improve the entranceway and the gateway and make, make it attractive, um, I know we don't have a lot of control because it's governed by federal law, but uh, I also think that um, I'd like us to try to propose some alternative locations that aren't right on the highway. Okay, any other uh, comments? No, I think, uh, I think you're right. I think it doesn't, um, you're right uh, on both fronts. One that we, uh, you know, if, if the Rogers were to decide it had to be this location and the, and the federal government was to agree, then there isn't much the town of Hocking Shores can do about it. They can, they can do that if they want to do it, but I think that doesn't preclude us from going to Rogers and saying, "Hey, look, this isn't the this isn't the most ideal location right on the highway on the northern entrance into Port Elgin. Maybe there's maybe we can help you find a, a location not far from there that's a little further off the highway where uh, the impact to that uh, entry is mitigated. Obviously, this tower, these towers are necessary. You know, we need these services, and and we understand Rogers is." need to improve their service. Uh, so we wanna make sure they get that tower built, but if we can back it up a bit from the highway, I think that would be uh, that would be a win-win. So uh, I don't know, Amanda, is there, uh, um, can we, uh, can staff, uh, can council ask staff to, to engage with Rogers on this and, and see if we can influence their decision on this? For sure we can. Do you want us just to offer um municipal properties as suggestions or just ask that they consider properties in the area that are um, set back from the highway or do both? I think you could, I mean, give them lots of options. I think we could do both. If there's a way to, uh, there's a piece of municipal land that might work, I'm sure council would consider that. And if there's a, if there's other private property that might work, uh, I think that would be fine too. I don't know. I see the vice deputy mayor. Vice deputy mayor. Yeah, I just I, I'm sure staff will look at all options, Mr. Mayor. I just want to draw to Amanda's attention. She would she would know this anyways. But Tomlinson Drive, uh, heading um, west to east, past the old police station. We have about 18 foot wide um, access point onto the Saugan Rail Trail. Uh, you know, I, I just think that I'm just throwing that out there as a suggestion, Amanda. Maybe it doesn't have to be the business park by the police department. I think that we do have that access point. Uh, I think it's around 18 or 20 feet wide. There might be. This might be a thought. Yeah. Thanks. No, I think there's some options that, that they could consider and we could offer them up and hopefully influence their decision making. So is that uh, clear enough then, Amanda? That gives you enough uh, sense of what we would like you to do? Yes, thank you. Okay, good enough, thank you. Uh, so then that moves us on to item two, an information report on a physician recruitment update and the CAO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this report was requested through our budget process where council asked that we just have a bit of an update on where things are at in the town of Sogging Shores as it relates to our physician recruitment efforts. Uh, as you'll remember, we have the physician had a joint physician recruitment program with King Carden and Bruce Power that did dissolve earlier this year. Uh, even with that dissolution, uh, the town of Sogging Shores has been very successful in advancing uh, a number of contracts related to physician recruitment. And I'll just highlight those for the public's benefit as well. So we do have uh, our, the following contracts that were initiated in November, 2020. So with Mr. Joel Young to open a practice July 1st, 2024. We have Christina 
Musni, who has started at the Dr. Earl Center, and Saji Khan, who is uh, planning to start on January 1st, 2022 at the Dr. Earl uh, Clinic. And then in September this year, we did approve uh, contracts with Oxana Lava so Sova, I hope I'm saying her last name correct, uh, with a practice to open in August 1st, 2023 in Kim Whitaker, who started it with emergency service December 1st, and will be at the Dr. Earl Clinic June 1st, 2022. Uh, as you're aware as well, in August this year, we did also sign a contract with the Victorian Order of Nurses in order to expand nurse practitioner uh, service at the Sogging Shores Medical Clinic in Southampton. So we were pleased to welcome Elizabeth Clare uh, at the Southampton location and also with the opening of the same day urgent care clinic there as well. So this is just a bit of an update for council and the public. And just a reminder to anyone uh, that is looking for a primary care physician in our community, that they should connect with Healthcare Connect Ontario. Uh, calling our clinics won't be helpful in this situation. You really do need to connect with the provincial system and they will help uh, refer you to a family care provider that's accepting new patients. So again, this was an update for council on the success of the program this year and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, questions, Councillor Smith? Thank you and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had the privilege of meeting, uh, interviewing, well, meeting virtually and uh, interviewing a number of the individuals on this list and I have found them to be all a wonderful fit to our community. I'm delighted to see some of the unique and innovative ways in which we've um, sought recruitment initiatives, particularly with Dr. Joel Young. Uh, and I'm looking forward to their arrival. I've also been very pleased to see the a number of people who have been uh, received calls off of the uh, the Healthcare Connect list recently, uh, and have found themselves in a position with a with a local physician. And I know we'll only continue to exhaust that orphan patient list. Uh, I did want to give particular recognition to our former director of protective services who worked tirelessly on a number of these agreements. Um, and, uh, and, and work to come up with some innovative solutions. And thank you to him for his, his work on this project. Thank you. Further uh, questions or comments to this report, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I just want to echo, um, you know, and thank you, uh, Councillor Smith, for all the great work you've done with physician recruitment. And, and uh, you, you know, I, I, we've said in the past that one orphan patient is one too many. And, and I think with all these good announcements, uh, hopefully that orphan patient list being you know, once and for all, get it down to zero, wouldn't that be wonderful? And Kara mentioned, I pulled up this number before the meeting just to remind people, if it's okay if I put it on the air, but it's a healthcare connect. It's really important that people do register because they do take those patients off that healthcare connect list. And I'm, I'm just going to throw the number out there for people who's listening. Um, it's 1-866-532-3136. So 1-866-532-3161. If you don't have a family doctor, or you're moving in from out of town, you want to de-roster and get on a new roster, uh, it's really important to register with Healthcare Connect. So I just want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Further uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we need to get to the point where uh, we're a growing community and where everybody who moves here can get a primary care provider. That's a, that's a critical component to being a successful community. And uh, frankly, we're being more successful than almost any other community our size at recruiting physicians and primary care providers. Um, this is a this is a long list of people coming to our community. A couple of them starting in 2022, 2023, and uh, one in 2024. Uh, so they're rolling out over the next uh, three years, starting immediately uh, one January 1st coming up here. So just in a few weeks. So uh, so I think folks uh, should feel really good about the success that the town of Saugeen Shores is having recruiting primary care providers. And I think people should feel good that, uh, you know, if you move to the town of Saugeen, George, you're gonna be able to get a doctor. And uh, that's uh, part of the, the selling proposition of our community. That's a pretty critical component. So, uh, so thanks uh, to our staff for uh, all the work and the position recruitment committee, Councilor Smith and everyone on that committee. Uh, um, we look forward to more successes going forward. I think it's important to note these, though we do have a long list, these efforts don't stop. Uh, they continue that we we um, we need to continue to recruit because we're growing and because we always have to deal with retirements of our existing doctors uh, going forward. So um, so we're going to be keeping this up and, uh, and we're looking forward to that. So thanks for that report.
uh, Kara, and that moves us then on to item three, an information report on snowmobile access to Port Elgin via the Mill Creek Bridge and the Acting Director of Community Services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, brief report this evening outlining uh, some of the details that uh, really come out of the delegation at the October 25th Council meeting with the, uh, the Saugeen Rail Trail Association and their concerns regarding uh, snowmobile use on a short section of trail uh, abutting uh, Le Mans Sports Park. So we did meet on site on November 9th. We went through a number of the concerns that were addressed including the, the fencing, the signage, uh, the actual physical location of the trail, where it would run. Uh, we did have representatives uh, attend from the Saugeen Rail Trail Association, the Snowmobile Club, uh, the, the county, uh, the police department had a representative there, and obviously community services staff attended that meeting. So although consensus was not reached at that point, I think we have came a long way to address a lot of the concerns uh, primarily revolving around safety and uh, safety for all people, including snowmobilers and pedestrians. So uh, I will reiterate where we are talking about a very short section of trail um, going back in uh, to the initial discussions that started in early 2021 and tr trying to find a, a method to alleviate the concerns with snowmobiles using the bridge along the, uh, the county road or the side road. So we did come up with a solution and consensus. We thought we had consensus to move forward with that. But we did have representatives from, again, the Snowmobile Club, uh, the county, the Saugeen Rail Trail Association, uh, and staff and I believe a couple members of council were also involved in some of those discussions. So this goes back quite some time and trying to find a solution to the snowmobile use on an unsafe road. And I think we've come up with the, the best solution that we can and council has previously approved the, uh, the, the notion that snowmobile trail be permitted in that section of trail behind Lamont Sports Park. Uh, and again, I can't, I can't stress enough, but it is a very short section of trail measures are being put in place to uh, mitigate any concerns that could could pop up. The Snowmobile Club and the OFSC has very stringent requirements in terms of signage, uh, markings, and, and all those safety precautions that will be in place. So again, this report is uh, an information for council. Uh, you can take uh, any questions. Uh, Frank Burroughs, again, is online as well, should questions arise. Thank you, Steve. Are there questions or comments from uh, members of the committee, Councilor Davinsky and Councilor Grace? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, through you to either Steve Hardy or Frank Burroughs, I was speaking with uh, Frank uh, earlier today via email, and there was one line that stood out because people are going to read these reports, and it says regarding the snowmobile trail, to minimize shared trail use with pedestrians and snowmobiles, a preferred route was selected mostly through Lamont Sports Park. And people could see that and say, oh, no, what are we doing here? I think, Steve, you have uh, explained it admirably. I wonder if Frank had anything further to add to that or either one of you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I think that was probably the, the key um, solution we felt we had was try to minimize how much of the rail trail was shared. and. Uh, Initially, the proposal was about 1.5 kilometers shared, and with the use of the uh, fence line in Lamont Sports Park, that allowed us to avoid the vast, vast majority of the um, <clears throat> rail trail. And the section in Lamont, it's up against the uh, fence line, which is a, a shrub area with uh, trees, so it's certainly not down on on near the uh, the playing fields or the um, recent landscape part of, of the park. It's up it's up up against the hedge uh, and fence line. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Grace. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor, for that. And um, thank you to Frank and Steve. Um, so just, um, I think, to confirm my understanding from the report, the length of the section now that's in question that would be shared is about 200 metres. Is that right? That's correct. And. Um, I know that one of the concerns of the um, of some of the rail trail uh, board was about the width and um, the feasibility of of that shared space. Um, can you speak to you know how you think that will work, practically speaking, in terms of sharing? You know, if you've got a 
snowmobile. And I mean, most people will be civil, I think, and, and step aside or whatever, but um, how does the width of that, of the trail in that area factor into the safety um, equation, I guess? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'll, I'll touch on it a little uh, to some degree, but then maybe I'll let uh, Frank in because he was involved in the initial conversations with the, all parties involved as well. But uh, we will be utilizing uh, snow fencing and barricades in, in many of those areas to, to separate the pedestrians from the snowmobiles. I will note that the uh, speed limit is greatly really reduced on those, uh, those sections as well. I believe the speed limit posted is uh, 20 kilometers an hour in those areas as well. So, uh, and if uh, it will be monitored. So should we have a number of complaints or we, we're starting to see a number of issues that pop up over the course of the, the, the short snowmobile season that we do have, uh, I think we can address those fairly quickly. And we did have the police uh, participate in that meeting as well. So I, I think they'd be, uh, they'll be monitoring that, but uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, our best method to, to uh, protect both parties is to provide that physical barrier, which would obviously include barriers and fencing and signage. Okay. Further questions or comments for uh, Steve or Frank, the Vice Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, Lisa's on the call too, or maybe Frank, you have this answer. Uh, the total kilometers of trails in Saugeen Shores um, is around 40 to 42 kilometers of trails, Frank. Lisa, could you answer that question for me? Yes, that's correct. That's all trails in, in town. About 40 to 42 kilometers? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And so I, I guess, you know, I, I hope we can make these 200 meters work. And, and I think with snow fencing and barricades and, you know, I just think it's important for the members of the public to understand that 41 kilometers and um, 400, you know, 200, 200 meters of the, uh, of the 800 kilometers, you know, I mean, the 40, 41 plus kilometers will still be non-motorized, correct? That's correct. Yes. Right. So, anyways, I uh, hopefully this this winter uh, it'll be it'll be a good test. I think we've got some discussions happening with with Kolb Bridge right now, Side Road thirteen fourteen. I don't know what the future holds for that, but um, you know maybe someday there'll be a return uh, to snowmobiles over the Kolb Bridge. I don't I, and we don't know that as a council yet, but you know perhaps in the future that 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 could happen. But you know, I'll try this one one winter here and see what happens and. Uh, I, I, you know, I think with with staff policing and and uh, safety measures you put in place, uh, you know, let's uh, try and make it work. So, anyways, I just thought I think it's, I thought it's important for the public to understand, Mr. Mayor, that you know, 41 plus kilometers are are still non motorized. So, thank you. Yeah. Further questions or comments? I think that's very key because some of the reporting that came out uh, following the delegation from the rail trail was made it sound like we were going to motorize the entire Saugeen rail trail, uh, which is not uh, by any means the case. Uh, talking about a very small section of trail that's sort of contiguous with the Bruce County trail, which is already motorized. Um, and so the, the bridge belongs to the county and the piece of trail that runs behind Walmart belongs to the county. We're not using that for this. We've decided because uh, uh, because it's important to, to try to keep motorized vehicles off of it for safety sake to uh, move motorized vehicles along the ridge at the park, Lamont Park, and um, separate those uses. And so I think, um, you know, we wound, wound up with a pretty good compromise here that uh, keeps the Sogging Rail Trail pedestrian, uh, except for a very small piece, and, uh, and get snowmobiles into the south end of Port Elgin so that they can gas up down near Walmart so that they can go get a bite to eat at Tim Hortons or Boston Pizza or all those places south end of Port Elgin, which is important. And, uh, um, you know, and I think, and I've heard from some of the neighbors in that area where snowmobiles will be coming in and they have some concerns and I get that it's new. And I think what we have to do, and I know Steve and Frank and, the, and our community services staff will be monitoring this closely through the winter to see how it's working and to make sure that it's working well and staying in touch with the neighbors and, and with the rail trail association and with the snowmobile club and, um, and, and, uh, you know, making sure that this arrangement is working the way we need it, need it to work and in the interest of everyone. So, um, so it's going to be a good trial, I think, but I feel good that it's going to work out well and that we're going to have, uh, we're going to have a, a good compromise here that's going to, that's going to work for everyone. So thanks. And I got to say thank you to uh, Steve and to Frank uh, for all the work you've done over the last year 
uh, several meetings, uh, working hard with all the stakeholders to make sure this came about and, and was the best it could be. So I uh, really appreciate your work. It's been tremendous. So um, yeah, if there's nothing further then, uh, thanks very much. Uh, that moves us then on to item four, an information report, uh, an employment lands update. And this comes to us from the economic development officer. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you, a brief update on the employment lands now that the planning process for the innovation park is complete. The next steps for the development are issuing a request for proposal for the engineering and servicing of the land and the distribution of marketing materials to prospective businesses. We continue to engage with interested investors and businesses on the parcels that have been identified in the MHBC report and will be continuing to bring updates to council as they develop. Good, thank you. Are there questions or comments for the economic development officer? I don't see any. I think we, I, I, you know, I think there's a fair bit of interest in this uh, development uh, from uh, both local businesses and businesses who may choose to come to Sogging Shores. And I think we're going to see some exciting businesses uh, in the park uh, in the coming, uh, you know, couple of years. So, um, um, so thanks for your work on it, Heather, and uh, looking forward to seeing it move forward. Thank you. And that moves us then on to the final one, which is an information report on storm recovery in North Shore Park and at the Port Elgin Harbor and uh, the Director of Community Services and the Manager of Parks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, an inf information report for Council this evening. Uh, talking about the, the storm damage that we incurred uh, back in September to the North Shore Park, uh, along with the harbor. So there was extensive damage done to both of those areas. Uh, as the report indicates, we lost about 175 mature trees in North Shore Park and surrounding areas. Uh, so there's some extensive dock damage done in the harbor. Uh, so we are working on measures to, uh, to rectify those. So obviously we've talked about the fact that we're working with insurance potentially to cover off some of the harbor repairs. Uh, but unfortunately, I think we as a municipality or the town will be on the hook for a majority of those costs in relation to the North Shore Park cleanup. So some cleanup has started. So we were able to open the walkway through North Shore Park. Very happy to report that the storm did not damage any infrastructure. So the splash pad was not damaged. The playground equipment was not damaged. The washroom buildings, uh, very little in terms of structural damage. So we came out uh, relatively unscathed on that front, but there is a lot of restoration work that needs to take place. So our intent is to get working on that as soon as, soon as possible, uh, drafting an RFP or tender documents that we can get that rolling in terms of the cleanup and have everything back in place and ready for well in advance of the, uh, the busy spring and summer season. So there will be a report um, coming a little bit later, I believe through the uh, chief financial officer and treasurer for pre-budget approval to move forward with these two projects. Again, with the, with the goal of having that work completed well in advance of the, the busy summer season. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from members on this report? I don't see any. I have had some uh, questions from members of the public who are looking at the park and seeing uh, seeing that it's still sort of in a, in a state of disrepair and wondering uh, when we're going to be advancing uh, work on that. So this is a that gives us a really clear answer for the public that uh, you know it's our intention to have it cleaned up in time for the summer season in 2022. And uh, and uh, um, I. It's just, I think uh, some folks uh, may be under the impression that uh, work has stopped and it's not going to proceed, and that isn't at all the case. Uh, we're uh, lining things up to move forward to finish restoring the park, and folks should feel confident about that. So, uh, if there's nothing further, then that brings us to the end of our information reports. Thank you, Steve, uh, and to the end of the Committee of the Whole agenda. So, we'll go do a round of uh, statements by members and uh, the Deputy Mayor. Nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, the Vice Deputy Mayor. I just wanted to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Happy holiday season and all the best in, uh, in 2022. It's been a very, very interesting year and I'm sure there's lots of good things in store for, for 2022. And, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to uh, march forward with particularly in the housing front, Mr. Mayor, we're gonna keep, keep plugging away there and keep in front of people and uh, 
we're, we're going to try and conquer that 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 issue around the, the need for affordable tenable housing in this community. So we'll continue to work hard. But Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Meyer, you'll recall that on Friday, you and I attended a class presentation with Ms. Zabo's grade five class at a Coalport Algonsagian Central School. Uh, they had recently undergone a unit on um, federal and provincial politics, and, and we suggested that perhaps they may want to understand the implications of municipal government. So we had a lovely conversation with a very engaged group of 10 year olds. Uh, and I was pleasantly uh, surprised with their amount of knowledge and interest in the goings on of uh, Soggy and Shores, particularly the Rex department, for those of you still on the call. Uh, but it was a great experience. And thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining me. Uh, and thanks to the class. Thank you. Yeah, it was lots of fun. Uh, further comments, Councillor Grace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple of things tonight. Um, first, I wanted to um, uh, recognize all of, uh, well, all of the volunteers and particularly the Soggy and Shores Rotary Club and Brenda Elliott, um, who worked on the Southampton Santa Claus Parade, uh, which was held last week, uh, as well as the Fairy Lake Memorial Holiday Lights Project. Um, and uh, you know, I can say that um, both projects bring a lot of joy and happiness to the community. And uh, I really appreciate that. And if you haven't had the opportunity to see the lights at Fairy Lake visited, it really is a magical setting. Um, last night, the Chantry Singers and Southampton United Church and the Soggy Shores Ecumenical Community uh, came together to present a wonderful online presentation of their annual lessons and carols. And uh, I think everyone misses being together uh, in the church for this wonderful event, but this was the next best thing. And it was also uh, an important fundraiser for the Women's House serving great uh, Bruce and Gray. And finally, uh, on December 6th, the CFUW Southport held its annual vigil to honor the victims of the 1989 Montreal massacre. It was a cold day, very windy, um, but um, many residents uh, braved the, the weather and participated. And uh, as a CFUW Southport member, I can tell you that we all appreciate the support and commitment um, of those who, who came um, to that day um, and to that, not celebration, but vigil. Um, and uh, we all hope for the day when this vigil will not be necessary. Yes, thank you for that, Councillor Davinsky. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, just one thing, others have already been mentioned. Merry Christmas, of course, to everyone, each and every one on uh, council, town staff, and of course the town at large. And what is the town at large, Saugeen Shores? Well, if you haven't heard, uh, we had our uh, fundraiser for the uh, we bring Tom to town on December 9th. And at last report, over one quarter of a million dollars has been raised in a 12 hour period. That alone tells you what Saugeen Shores is all about. Very proud to be part of the community. Thank you. Thanks for that. Excellent. And uh, Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Nothing for me tonight. Very good. Well, you guys have covered a lot. Of, I had spent a busy couple of weeks. I did also, in addition to what's been said, want to mention uh, that the Sogging Shores Chamber of Commerce had their annual an annual general meeting on the 6th of December. And I wanted to congratulate on behalf of the municipality, uh, Michelle K. Scott, uh, the new president of the Sogging Shores Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as the new uh, board of directors at the chamber, uh, obviously a really important partner uh, for the municipality and uh, um, just very, uh, was glad to be there and uh, and have a chance to chat at their annual general meeting. Hopefully before too long, it'll be in person again, because that's uh, that's way better, but uh, it was good nonetheless. And uh, um, yeah, actually, I think you guys covered the rest of it. So I'll just uh, conclude. This is our last uh, committee of the whole meeting before the holidays. So. Uh, a Merry Christmas to each of you and to everyone who's watching uh, at home and to the whole community and uh, and all the best in 2022. Hope it's happy and healthy for you all. So with that, uh, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Davinsky. All in favor?
the committee stands adjourned. We'll reconvene at five after eight. There, Mr. Mayor, we have all members returned to the meeting. As noted earlier, we have Councillor Schreider and Councillor Dave Mayette absent. All other members are here. You may begin. Thank you, Linda. Then we'll call to order this regular council meeting. And uh, the second item on the agenda is disclosures of pecuniary interest. Ask any member if you have one of those you'd like to declare. Seeing none, I'll remind you, you can declare one anytime if you need to. The next is additions, deletions, amendments. We don't have any of those. We have no public meeting. So that moves us on to adoption of the minutes. And we have the regular council minutes of November 22nd, 2021, special council minutes of November 22nd, the committee of the whole minutes of November 22nd, and our budget meeting minutes of November 30th and December 7th, 2021. And I have a resolution that council adopt the minutes of council meetings of November 22nd, 2021, and note and file the minutes of the committee of the whole meeting of November 22nd, 2021. The budget minutes of November 30th and December 7th, 2021 as presented is the remover and seconder. Moved by the vice deputy mayor, second by the deputy mayor. Any questions or comments to any of those sets of minutes? Seeing none, all in favor. That's carried. All right, that moves us on then to reports of the Committee of the Whole. And the first is a general government report regarding the Cedar Crescent Village. And there's a resolution that Council adopt the general government report dated November 22nd, 2021, recommending that Council approve an amendment, approve, and yes, an amendment to Schedule A of the land lease agreement for the Cedar Crescent Village. And the Council directs staff to work with the proponent to develop a complete set of project plans for the entire site to support a site works and servicing agreement that would update Schedule D of the lease and update the leasable area. Is there a mover and second? Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Grace. Questions or comments? Councillor Grace? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and through you, a question to the CAO. Um, when do you anticipate that um, the site servicing plan and the specifics of that agreement will be presented to Council? Yeah, thank you for the question. And through you, Mr. Mayor, we're targeting right now to come back to Council on January 10th with the complete set of the project plans and the site works and servicing agreement. And that would also amend the lease agreement. Schedule D is outlined here. Okay, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, then all in favor. That's carried. That moves us then to item 6.2, community services report regarding renaming of the off-leash dog park. And there's a resolution that council adopt the committee, the community services report dated November 22nd, 2021, renaming the Sogging Shores off-leash dog park located at 813 Lennon Street, Port Elgin, Ontario to the Abbey Bolton Memorial off-leash dog park. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by the vice deputy mayor, seconded by Councillor Carr. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor. That is carried. All right, that moves us then to item seven, reports of municipal officers and committees. And the first is a staff report on the water and sewer master plan. Uh, and that there is, there is a resolution that council adopt the water and sewer master plan. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Councillor Carr, second by the deputy mayor. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. That then moves us on to item two, which is a staff report on pre-budget approvals. And there's a resolution that council approved the capital projects listed in this report for up to $1,621,000 in pre-budget approval spending on capital projects. The council approved a 1.75% economic adjustment effective January 2nd, 2022 for the outline groups and salary grids, IUOE salary grid, non-union full-time and permanent part-time employee salary grid, volunteer firefighters, members of council, police services board, planning members, including committee of adjustment and part-time Aquatics employees. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Maya, seconded by Grace. Questions or comments to the resolution? Um, Councillor Davinsky. I just want to be clear on this. Are we giving ourselves a raise here? Uh, and isn't that usually done by a, a, an arm's length committee? 
So this is the um, the annual cost of living increase. Council always takes a it takes the same cost of living increase as all non-union uh, employees, um, and then what uh, what occurs um, on occasion is a broader review of the compensation for members of council, like, and that would be done like you're suggesting, which might result in larger fluctuations. But council attempts to make sure its our, its wages keep up with inflation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are there further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. All right, so that moves us on to item eight, motions and notices of motion. And this is a motion regarding Westerio Power and the resolution is that council approve the attached resolution of the shareholders of Westerio Power and authorize the mayor and clerk to fully execute the intent of the resolution attached here too. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by Smith, second by Carr. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? It's carried. And then that moves us on to item nine, bylaws. And there are four bylaws there for your consideration. Anyone wish to have any of those drawn out for individual consideration? Seeing none, then I'll read the resolution. Uh, uh, and the resolution is that the following bylaws are hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this 13th day of December 2021. 197 2021 being a bylaw to set fees and charges for the provision of services or activities for the town of Sogging Chores. 298 2021 being a bylaw to authorize the borrowing upon amortizing debentures in the principal amount of $5,517,078 toward the cost of Lamont Sports Park Outdoor Sports Complex Phase 1. 399 2021 being a bylaw to authorize the entering into of a fire dispatch agreement with the Owen Sound Police Services. For 100 2021 being a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement with Her Majesty the Queen, represented by the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans for the lease of the Port Elgin and Southampton Harbors. And 5 101 2021 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meetings of the Corporation of the Town of Saudi and Shores is a remover and seconder. Moved by the Vice Deputy Mayor, seconded by Elsa Davinsky. Questions or comments to the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. And then that moves us to the end of the meeting. So I have a resolution that this regular council meeting of December 13th, 2021 hereby adjourns at 8, 12 p.m. Is there a mover and seconder? Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Smith. All in favor? That's carried. Council stands adjourned. Have a good evening, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone.